Hey everybody, welcome to Astro with Eric. Um, and thank you for joining me on another video today. This video is to help answer a question that I received from one of my subscribers um, from one of my earlier videos when I was talking about getting my peer. I also mentioned a Tribatinoff mask that I use for collimation for my Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes. Um, if you're not familiar with collimation of a telescope, of a, of a mirror-based telescope, such as a Schmidt or Newtonian, basically what you're doing is you're realigning your optics, okay, it's getting them all back in line. In this case, aligning the secondary mirror back to the primary so you can achieve the, the best focus and, you know, the, the round, you know, perfect round stars, okay, because if you are out of collimation, you will notice that your stars can end up being egg shaped or some odd shape that um, you just simply don't want, especially in, in astral photography. So what we're gonna go over is how I collimate with using this Tribatinoff mask. Now, the Tribatinoff mask, similar to a traditional Batinoff mask, it is a focusing aid, but it is also a collimation aid for Schmidt Cassegrains. And what you'll do is you'll have to line up the center diffraction spikes on that um, that you'll see. Um, you'll have to get those back in line um, in correspondence with the angled um, diagonal spikes. And you have usually a set of six sets of three spikes that, that run through the star. And with a Tribatinoff mask, you'll put this over on over your uh, secondary, over your corrector plate. But the way you'll do it, you have to do it in a certain way. It makes it a little bit easier for you. If you notice here on this Tribatinoff mask, there's arrows, right? You see, er there's arrows here on the mask. And what you'll do, you will line these arrows up in, in correlation with your collimation screws. In my collimation screws, I use Bob's knobs. Bob's knobs are, I, in my opinion, are much easier to use than the traditional screws that come with your Schmidt Cassegrain because you minimize the risk, one, of using that a screwdriver and that screwdriver slipping and you damage the, your corrector plate um, or your glass here. And it's much easier to loosen and tighten these screws. So it makes it a lot easier to use. So if you do have a Schmidt Cassegrain, I would highly recommend considering getting Bob's knobs for these. So what we'll do is we will put the mask here. And what we do is we line up the arrows with the collimation screws. Okay. So here, here, and here. All right. So that's the first thing we'll do. And then we'll bring it into focus. And once we bring the star into focus, you want to use a bright star. I use a very bright star, such as tonight I'm going to be collimating and I'm going to use Capella, for example. Um, and what I'll use also is a piece of paper or cardboard. Um, this is a piece of black cardstock here. And what I will do is when using the focus of my, the focus mode of my ASI Air, I will crank up the gain, right? So I can see the stars better. And I will then cover two of the spikes leaving only one. And what this is supposed to do is it's supposed to then make two of those center spikes disappear, leaving only one, all right? And that helps you know by covering that up and only having that one other center spike, you know that that most likely, that is your collimation screw that you're going to work with for that particular, um, set of the fraction spikes and i'll do that on each one now to collimate a schmidt cassegrain 
it is a series of usually tightening and loosening the three collimation screws. You will, you, if you tighten one, you'll usually tighten, un, loosen rather, the other two. And you'll do that in a series. And you wanna be very precise. You wanna make very small adjustments. It doesn't take a lot for this mirror to move. You wanna make small adjustments and then while you're in, if you're using an ASI air and you're focusing and you can actually see those refraction spikes as you know, as you're adjusting, um, then you'll know how close or how far off you are um, on your collimation. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to go outside to my Edge 8 Schmidt Cassegrain and I'll take the Tribatinoff mask here and I'll be going, getting that telescope into collimation because it is a little off um, before I do my next set of imaging. Because it is very important, as we, as I said, to have your telescope collimated before you do any type of imaging because you want nice round stars. Okay, so we're gonna go outside and we'll go ahead and do this and I will show you what I'm doing um, coming up. Okay, so here we are outside using my ASI Air, and you can see I have Capella here centered. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick five second preview with the Tribatinoff mask. And take a look and see how everything is. And you can see that as I zoom in here, the diffraction spikes in the center of each are slightly off. So we are a little out of collimation and what we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to adjust those screws as I mentioned doing the tighten and loosening and I'll go ahead and pause the video now and do that and when I come back we'll see the results. Okay we're back and as you can see we are collimated now. You can see each of the spikes that they're going directly through in between the, the diagonal spikes right through the star just by working with those collimation screws ever so much to get everything in line and perfectly straight. Now we'll go ahead and we'll defocus a bit and you can actually see the airy disc itself while I defocus here and how that and how the secondary is in the center of the defocused star and this is what we want we want to have that airy disc or that donut even with me using the Tribatinoff mask here you can see that I am dead center this is a really good looking airy disc or donut. We'll go ahead and bring everything back into focus. And I'm quite pleased with how everything turned out. So I am all set for my next steps of getting ready to image for the night. So it's getting pretty cold out here, so I'm going back inside. Okay, so we're back inside. And as you can see, now my Edge 8 Schmidt Cassegrain is well collimated and ready for a night of imaging. And it didn't take very long, but some things I will let you know about. Um, so you're just aware when um, using these tribatinoff masks and collimating in general. When I mentioned also that when you're using collimation screws, you're doing a tighten, you're tightening one and loosening the two others. That is the normal process. But sometimes, in my case, just like um, this evening, I had to actually tighten each one of the three screws ever so slightly to bring the um, to bring everything back into collimation and get those diffraction spikes lined up the way they're supposed to be. 
So sometimes it will happen where you have to, where you'll end up tightening each one, but usually it is a tighten and a loosen, loosen um, to the other two screws, but just so you're aware of that. Um, besides that, I really think that's it. Um, I do appreciate you joining me. If um, you liked this video and it was helpful to you, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. I appreciate you joining me and cons maybe consider subscribing. Um, don't forget to also click on the bell and that'll let you know that whenever I bring out a new video, you'll get a notification. Don't forget also to join my, me, Dan, Scott, Peter, and the rest of the gang at Astro World TV every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern and every Friday when we have Q&A at 7 p.m. Eastern. And until then, thank you for joining me. Clear skies, and to quote Dr. King, only in the darkness can you see the stars. Take care.